Hello there. Well, today we're going to look into what curl is, C-U-R-L, or I should say it like this. It means client URL. And uh, what is it? It's an extensive command line tool that you can use to send data to and from a server. So there are a lot of options available in curl. So you might be thinking, why should I use curl in the first place? Well, curl can be used for quick testing. I usually use curl for that. Otherwise, I can write Python scripts and I can use HTTP IE as well instead of curl or I can or I can use Postman as well. But with curl, I can also run quick tests and there are a ton of options available uh, with curl. So I'm going to show you all those options, almost all of those options one by one. But this is one of the options that you can use curl hyphen edge, which is for help. Once you hit enter, you'll be able to find these are all the options that gives you that it supports well there are other options as well not just uh, it's not just restricted to these options there's hyphen x hyphen r and um, others as well but to begin with before we jump into these um, options uh, let me tell you that you can download um, curl from https um, it's going to be curl and dot h a x x dot s e well, let's just jump into the uh, browser and see how it looks. Okay, so here I am at Google and I'm gonna go to the URL bar and I'm dot hacks dot se, as I just mentioned before, right? Hit enter and it shows up like this, so don't worry. Anyways, you're at the website that you need uh, to go to to download um, curl from. Right uh, at the bottom right here, you see this downloads option. This is what you need to click on right here, right? You see this downloads and that's what you'll click on. As soon as you click on it, uh, you'll find that there are a ton of options available in here. As I mentioned, uh, curl is almost um, available on every single platform out there. Um, there might be an exception, uh, one or two other exceptions, but you'll see it's available on almost every single um, you know, operating system or platform out there. So if you're using Windows, um, you can use uh, this one, Windows 64 or Windows 32, this one, you can use this one. And um, there's also another option available in here. Last I checked, it didn't work that well, but you can also click on curl uh, download wizard. Click on it and you can mention what operating system you want it for step by step. You're going to mention all those steps and at the end, you'll get the curl that your operating system supports and whatnot, right? So you can go through the wizard as well. Otherwise, you can just go ahead and download this one right here. If you're using Windows, uh, this should work or you can just scroll down to the bottom like I showed you before, right? Uh, you can go through the wizard as well. But uh, again, apart from this, there's also a guide as well for this, just a couple of lines. And uh, I believe you should be able to get it from here. If not, you should, uh, let me just show it to you. Yes, so I'll put a link in the description for where to download uh, curl from. And I'll, I'll also put this link in the description as well as to how you're gonna go ahead and install uh, uh, curl on, uh, let's say, for example, Windows. Yes, there are the steps mentioned in this document. Mac OS, yes. Linux, yes. It also gives you the URLs right here, curl executable wizard, as I mentioned, and it's going to give you all those options, right? And how to run your um, curl program for the first time or run curl commands for the first time, right? Uh, curl hyphen H or uh, hyphen hyphen help. But apart from that, uh, this will give you all the steps. Um, in case you face any problems, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help as much as I can. If you're using Mac OS, you can use it as well. Linux installation at the bottom. Anyways, I'm gonna put a link in the description and you can download it from there. I mean, you can check this page out from there. Anyways, let's jump back to the CLI and let's see how it goes. We're gonna test out a few commands with curl. Let's see, okay. We're back at the CLI and let me just go ahead and do it. Control C here and it didn't take it anyways. CLS to clear the screen and uh, just to make it look clean, right? So I can do a curl hyphen hyphen help as well. Hyphen H also works. As I said before, there's um, there are a lot of options available. Hyphen D is for posting data. So uh, when you talk about hyphen D, this option actually allows you to pass data to the remote server. 
right? You can either put the hyphen D option inside the command itself. So you can do a, a curl hyphen D and then mention the data, or you can pass the data using a file as well. So hyphen D would work like that. Uh, other famous options that, for example, you have hyphen H as in help that I use as well as I used it right here as well. Um, there's another option that I usually use. Well, you'll have to use it as well as hyphen U to mention the username and password. And this is the way you're going to actually have to send it. User and then colon and then the password, like literally not mention like literally user but the actual user and the actual password is what you got to mention hyphen v is extremely important i tell you that if you're someone who troubleshoots stuff and you know who deals with troubleshooting network issues this and that um well hyphen v verbose is extremely important it gives you detailed information about um what's really going on in the back end uh, when this request is being made right so uh, yeah let me go ahead and uh, actually, you know what? There, there are. There's another important option that I wanted to let you know. So you can do a curl hyphen X as well. This X is an alias for actually request. So instead of writing hyphen hyphen request, you can just write hyphen X and then mention, hey, I want to get data uh, from the server. Hey, I want to post data to the server. I want to delete. I want to do all these actions, right? But the X, you mention what request you're making, right? So that's that. And let's take a look at our very first example that we're going to try with our ESA. Okay, so the very first one I'm going to try is curl, and I'm going to say hyphen K. Hyphen K is nothing but an alias for hyphen hyphen insecure, which means that basically, you know, um, we're asking it to ignore HTTPS certificate validation, right? So K is used for that. So hyphen K or hyphen hyphen insecure is the same thing. All right. And uh, 106.36.220. Actually, I should have checked if I'm able to reach uh, to my ESR or not. Well, all you is we'll get to know once we're done with the testing. So I'm gonna tr try to fetch the status details from the ESA. I'm gonna mention the username, as I mentioned before, that literally I'll, I'll have to mention the username, colon, and then the password. The password is ironport-2 uh, for my ESA. I hit enter and voila, there you go. That's a lot of stuff right there. It gives you all the information with just one command, right? And curl actually cannot, I mean, you can use curl with different protocols. So it's not just restricted to HTTP, HTTPS. You can use it, for example, with FTP as well. I'm going to try to show you that as well with a separate example. But anyways, um, uh, this is the point. So what I'm doing is I'm running the curl command with the hyphen K option, mentioning that the certificate validation should not happen. I ignore that. Um, and then HTTPS, I mentioned the host name or the IP address and then uh, forward slash XML, forward slash status, and the hyphen U, I mentioned the username and the password with the hyphen U option, right? And that's how you do it. I'm gonna show you the other options as well. So let's take a look at another example. Okay, so what I'm gonna try, uh, I'm gonna try now is I'm gonna fetch um, other things, like for example, with the same thing, you can do DNS status, hide enter, and uh, there you go, it gives me this information. I ran the command right here, right? So it gives you this information about the DNS. If you want um, information about other things, for example, you can do top hosts. Let's say if, I'm, if I have anything there, it's gonna give me that information. Again, now see, uh, I wanna show you one more thing, right? Um, uh, we did talk about hyphen V, right? We did talk about that, so let me just scroll up a little bit. We did talk about hyphen V before. That hyphen V means verbose. I'm gonna explain it to you right now with this example. Well, you'll understand it once I run it. So when I ran this command, this is the output I got, right? It gives you the, the, the operating system version, the host name, blah, 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 nothing there in the inside top host, so we're good. So hyphen V, if you're troubleshooting network issues and all that, hyphen V will give you more information, right? I hit enter. Come on, something wrong. Come on, what happened now? Okay, there you go, right? 
with the hyphen V, as soon as I included hyphen V in there, it gives you step by step every piece of information. Trying this, overport this, connected to this, and so on. It even tells you what other requests you. Well, again, you might be thinking, hey, I didn't mention the hyphen X option. I didn't mention hyphen X get, but it still went for get because that's by default. If you don't mention hyphen X get, it's not required because get is selected by default. If I want to use post, on the other hand, I'll have to use hyphen X option, right? It gives you all that information, detailed, very detailed um, authorization, basic, and other stuff that happened. And uh, yeah, voila, that's it. And um, finally, it has that information as well that um, this is the piece of information that was fetched before as well, right? So we're all good with that. And uh, apart from uh, top host, I'm going to remove the hyphen V. And apart from top host, you can uh, fetch other things as well. For example, top in, you can do that, hit enter. Oh, it's fetching almost the same thing, but obviously it's not because I don't have anything there. So uh, it ends with top and right here. It ends with top hosts, the uh, the previous one, right? I have an option to, for uh, let me just clear the screen. I have an option to run um, host status as well. I can fetch that. So I can do host status. And uh, if I run it this way, that should be sufficient, but I'll have to mention which host status I'm looking for, for example, right? It gives me this information. If I'm looking for, not, not necessarily, but if I'm looking for any specific host name, right? So what I can do is I can put a space at the end. I can do a hyphen capital or an uppercase F. I can say host name. Hey, this is the host. Oh, sorry. I can say, hey, I want information about a certain host name. What is that host name? I mentioned um, Cisco.com, for example. And I hit enter. It's going to give me information about that itself because right here, right? And it says the status is unknown. Okay, no problem. If there's anything, uh, I can't remember anything from the back of my head. So CPQ, CPQ, um, the CPQ queue. I don't, I don't think so. Um, wait, wait, what, 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 what did we get here? Okay, um, I'll have to check it from the unknown. Okay, it's, again, I'll have to check it from the CLI, but anyways, you get the point, right? You'll be able to do it. So you'll have to just, if, just for testing, um, you can go to your ESA and there run the command top uh, hosts space A-C-T-I-V-E R-C-P-T-S and this will fetch the active recipients from there anyways. If not, you can take it step by step. Anyways, it's not about that. So anyways, you got it, right? So this is how you can do it. You can fetch host names, top in, top host status, and all the other stuff. Now, let's say, for example, I want to go ahead and, okay, let me just clear the screen. Now, okay, I want to show you how to dump the headers to a file because you see sometimes you get the output. It's, it's huge. You don't want that to happen, right? But the headers, they're pretty complicated. You want to check them separately. You can do that as well with curl. I'm going to show you an, an example, which is with the curl URL itself. For example, I do a dump and then I say header. And then I can mention the file name here. So I don't want to keep it in the, in the, in this folder, right? So I just want to change it. I want to make a directory. Um, let's say what T okay. The network Viking that should make a directory. Okay. Uh, I hope it's there. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to change the directory to the network, uh, Viking. Oh, perfect. Right. We're there. Now I'll run the command, the curl command from here. So that the headers file goes directly into this folder. So I know the path is going to be this, right? Um, and this is a windows server. So you can run the MKDIR and CD uh, commands in it like this. Anyways, for those who don't who didn't know, anyways, right. So I can run uh, the same command here. I can do a dump header, and then I can name the file as headers, for example, dot text, headers dot text, and the website, curl.se. I can hit enter. It's not going to give me anything, obviously. So if I do a DIR now, 
as you find there's a headers.txt file now right only this much now just to show it to you i didn't show you the dir command before so let me just run the same command with the as you can see there's just headers.txt file in here right nothing else so let me just quickly change the file name so that i can just show you the difference differentiator <laughs> Uh, that's that's something I mean that's a weird name anyways for for an example like this that's what I mean dir and you get a differentiator.txt right so the, the 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 size and everything with that you just dump the headers from this website into this file that's how you dump the headers and if I didn't mention it before um, I guess I did but anyways it does support other protocols as well for example FTP I'm gonna show you another open uh, URL website um, example for this so I can show you that I can do a FTP right so I can do FTP dot uh, funet dot fi and then I'm gonna fetch the readme file and if I do that I should be able to get a certain output from there right right as you can see I got a lot of stuff out uh, out from there I'm gonna show you another option now okay well because the output is huge i don't want that i don't want all these bytes coming to me that's a lot i don't want all these bytes right so i want less bytes let me run the same command again and let me just add hyphen r in here and mention hey i just want the first 100 bytes that's it i don't want more than that i hit enter it's going to fetch only the first 100 bytes and that's it now I want to increase it now that's too less i'm going to say 200 zero to 200 and i'll get more data out of there right so i was able to get these extra lines in here and this actually fetched the first um uh 200 actually 201 so yeah <laughs> that's what it is so um if i want to get the last um bytes so i can just mention without the um the first zero two or whatever I can just mention enter and there you go warning the specified range must be this and it's uh, it's giving me the last output from here anyways so the last part that's how you get the last part but you did see that i got a warning oh, i got a warning in there right so what was that all about i actually uh, should have used a hyphen 200 and not just um hyphen r and then 200 i should have used hyphen r hyphen 200 and not the first part of the range and that's why i got that warning so once you do that you'll be able to see the correct output uh, let me just show it to you so this is what i mean if i go ahead and for example run this i'll exclude just the zero this will fetch me the last 200 I've removed the hyphen as well. That's what caused the warning and it just gave me the complete output. So hyphen 200 will do. Um, yeah, that's how you actually get the last 200, right? So looks better now, right? And it makes more sense. Um, so yeah, that's what it is. Let's proceed. Okay, so let me just go ahead and clear the screen and yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you another example with the API. We did a host name slash XML, right? Uh, with the curl, I'm going to use a slash API after this, right? I'm going to show you that now. But before that, if any of you are new to the new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe, share, like, and whatever, all the other stuff to hack the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just uh, show you the example with the API. Okay, let me just go ahead and fetch the command. It's uh, for fetching the uh, message tracking logs it's a uh, slightly longer uh, command and uh, there you go I'm using the same options I don't really need to use this uh, but just for demonstrate demonstrating it as well um, and you know about all of these options and s is basically the hyphen s is basically to make sure that oh, the communication is silent so it's basically like running a curl in a silent mode it does not show any progress meter or error messages as well so you may choose to ignore it if you don't want to use it don't use it that's okay uh, the hyphen u option to fetch the username up uh, to mention the username and password and then you have the https and as i mentioned when i said uh forward slash api right yeah. what i mean by that is as you can see right here i use the colon 6443 i've explained it 
in multiple videos before. I would highly recommend checking uh, my other videos on network automation uh, that are really going to help you. You can mention the start date and an end date as well. Just to mention that, uh, you know, in which time field you want this to, uh, you know, this, this particular command to fetch. The message tracking logs, well, the output is definitely going to be ugly because message tracking logs do have a lot of options, right? So if I hit enter now, only if it takes the takes my command, oh, it did, and it's going to take its sweet time, I guess. Mm, oh, there you go. Ain't that beautiful, right? So <laughs> oh, that's not beautiful. So uh, when you get stuff like this and you don't want to, you know, go ahead and check it out and here you're like, what the hell is going on? You may need to copy it from here and doing all that stuff. Let's get the output inside a file because this is not user friendly when you want to go ahead and, you know, let's say search for stuff. You cannot do a control F and stuff like that. So you can use an option of putting the output with the hyphen O inside a file let's say testing.txt, right? Or or better, mtl uh, output.txt. I want the output to be sent to this file, not on my screen. I don't want to make, I want to make sure that my screen uh, remains clean, right? So it's going to try to copy all of that inside this mtl underscore um, output.txt file. And as soon as it does it, uh, it's going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, show me this prompt again as soon as it's done. Right? So it's doing it right now. Not sure how long it is going to take. Oh, it's done. I just had to hit, hit enter. I can use a DIR command again to see how it went. Oh, I do have the mtlopera.txt, and you can see 11,913. All good, right? So I hope this uh, video tutorial was useful. And there's uh, there's uh, there there's tons of stuff available on the internet with curl, and especially on the hex uh, curl.hex.ic website. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, there are video tutorials as well with a, a lot many options um, that you can use. I was uh, I just tried my best to make it as short as possible, but as informative as possible as well. So I'm going to put a link in the description for the videos, for the description, for further notes and, um, you know, all the other stuff. So, yeah, thank you so much. Um, and if you have any questions, please put it down in the uh, comment section and uh, support the channel. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day ahead. Goodbye.